Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. Looking at a large country like Spain with the expanding population, also uh, very dry areas uh, among its geographical formations, is very much involved in what's called Mar Salute. This is a managed aquifer recharge. And this is something that's being studied through the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. And we have with us as a guest is Professor Xavier Sanchez Vela. And Xavier, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Hi. Glad, glad to, to have be here. you with us. Yeah, we're glad you're here. Say, uh, the slides we're going to be sharing are somewhat complicated because you're involved in computer modeling and all that. But talk about the uh, shortly, uh, the University of, of uh, Catalonia, the Polytechnic there, and why it's so important and its work with Mars Salute. We are here in, in, in Barcelona. This is a dry area, as you, you were saying, with a lot of, with a high population. So we are, have always this uh, large problem of water resources management. So we are very interested in all the topics. We, we, I'm here in the Civil and Environ Environmental Engineering School. Mm -hmm. So we deal with all the aspects about bringing water from one place to another one, but also all the aspects related to quality of this water and how this water if it's safe for the population, risk for the population, and, and so on. Right. Now, looking at this uh, complicated chart that we have in front of us, but this is all about the managed uh, aquifer recharge. Why is this chart so important? And what comfort can citizens within Spain, other countries, take from the research that you are doing to protect their interests, but also make sure that they have both a sufficient amount of water but also the quality of the water. Exactly. This is the, the right duality. I mean, you, you really have to study the amount of water, but also the quality of this water. That's very important. Now, the idea is relatively simple. If you go back a few years, you say, OK, uh, we need water. You know, like this is this was in the 70s, something like that. Eh? Mm -hmm. So we need water and we have water. The only problem that we have is we have wastewater or we have water opportunity water that we call mm -hmm. is storm water, something like that. Only when it rains and here it doesn't rain. It rains maybe 20 days a year or something like that. So, mm. uh, so, so the important point is when we have water, we have to use it. And then, of course, you cannot do that because this water is not the right quality. So you need to do something. You want to store it. Well, come on, this is a very dry country. The sun is going to evaporate. So instead of that, what we do is we put it in the subsurface. That's it. We hide it. Mm -hmm. And and then because it's hidden, because it is hidden, uh, we don't need to worry about it. And it's going to basically change its quality. And we have to study this change in the quality with time and with location, of course, mm -hmm. uh, by in, in order to increase our water resources. That's exactly the idea of MAR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this it's a delicate balance, isn't it, uh, yeah. Xavier, as far as the quantity quality issue? And I know that many of the water experts are really always focused on the quality, uh, but more and more, many cities and countries actually have to be worried about the volume of water uh, that you actually have. Now, looking at these charts, and we, <clears throat> we're going through some of these uh, because this is very important as far as the quality is concerned, also to make sure that there's sufficient quantity uh, for your citizens. So what is this chart telling us? 
Well, well, first, if you want, I, I give something about this quantity idea. If you want to look at a large city, whatever this large city, for example, Barcelona is 2 million people. Uh, we need uh, about, I was doing the conversion before, uh, 50 billion gallons per year of water uh, to supply the city. So that's a huge amount of water. And then this is the quantity part. Now, now this one is related more to quality. So here, what you can see are a number of processes that take place when you infiltrate water from, from top down in this case because it's just driven by gravity and then this water starts with some quality with some for example it has a lot of oxygen dissolved and then uh, microorganisms uses use this oxygen uh, to catalyze some some uh, reactions some chemical reactions so the the chemistry so the actual contaminants uh, change as a function of depth and and then it depends in this case for example this is an example with in which temperature was extremely important but there were more i mean uh, there, there are just a few graphs and then um, when you have all these wiggle things mean that you have you infiltrate water when you have water and then this water has a particular temperature and all these are driving all the processes that take place in the subsurface to change the quality of the water now as we as we go through this but i really want to get uh, to this map uh, why do we have this map and what what are we seeing here about the complexity of being able to provide water abundantly, great quality for the citizens. Yeah, in this case, uh, this is part of a previous uh, research project that we have in Europe. You have all these coordinated projects in Europe. Uh, in this case, we are we have several flags. Uh, we have uh, Portugal, we have Spain, we have this site uh, very close to Barcelona, Italy, uh, Malta, Israel. Mm -hmm. I think I'm not missing any, anybody. And, and then the idea was, to find that all these infiltration ponds, which is one of the many types for managed aquifer research, can fail for many different reasons. And these reasons can be related to quantity of water, to quality of water, but they can also be related to economic aspects, health aspects, uh, I don't know, even religious aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we studied the, which were the most important depending on the location. So depending basically on the country, on the legal issues, social issues, and then of course the weather and uh, all the climate uh, relationships so so each one of these has all you cannot see in detail but you can see the colors eh? and the colors means more risk uh, to fail the system and the color indicates basically what type of failure is mostly expected and the whole thing about it we don't really think about even religion uh being involved as far as water is concerned but it is uh, oh, yeah. depending on your faith uh community uh, how you view water, even the microorganisms in the water, uh, has different meaning to uh, different people as we uh, as we move forward. So the technical and uh, all these aspects, uh, how do we actually balance all of this so that the people understand that there are experts like you, Xavier, you're, you're looking at their best interest, you're doing the research, you're trying to find out the best way forward as far as balancing this quantity and the quality issue and all of this research how does that give the general public comfort that you really are doing it on their behalf well i hope with the situation with with as the year passes as the years pass uh, people will understand that science will be the solution for most of the problems we are humanity is facing nowadays or in the future or whenever whenever you you hear this one uh, then uh, the important point is in this case is the concept of multidisciplinarity so we are working in a problem in which we have water so we have hydraulics we have physics if you want to think about it mm -hmm. then it infiltrates and then you want to know how the chemistry of this so the quality eh, basically chemistry changes and the way to re these, these elements that are dissolved in the water react are driven by microorganisms. So you need biology. And of course, in order to understand what happens in the future, in the future means after it infiltrates what will happen within the aquifer, you need geology. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is exactly our specialty. We are uh, a multidisciplinary team. Each one of us has a different background. And what we do is we study the problem in its full complexity. So it's a very thorough, very complicated, very complex problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even more complicated because one thing affects the other one. Okay, so chemistry affects biology, biology affects infiltration capacity, infiltration capacity affects 
uh, food that is driven to the bugs and uh, whatever. I mean, it's, it's kind of very, very complicated. And that's exactly the idea. You, you can solve, or sorry, you can, uh, you can understand the problem in terms of equations. And then what you need to do is to solve equations. And uh, solving equations, of course, you need computers to do that because they are very, very complex, mm -hmm. uh, coupled, sophisticated, heterogeneous, whatever, uh, all kinds of complexities you can imagine. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, what, we need, what we want to do, answering more in detail your question, I think I was just answering another question, basically. <laughs> no, uh, what we, what, the idea is how to convey this to society. And that's a, that's a problem sometimes when you talk with university professors that sometimes we are not that good on, on, this, mm -hmm. on this topic. But uh, we need to, com to convey that uh, uh, using water, managed agriculture for richer is very is safe. I mean, that's an important point. Uh, and all the things we are doing, and not only us, but all the researchers in the world that work in this topic is to and make people understand that this is a safe um, mm -hmm. technology. Right. And that's that's something that's very important. So Xavier, looking at the next five, 10 or 15 years, the Polytechnic Institute of Catalonia and Marsolt, what do you see for the growth and expansion of this type of research and the outcomes across the globe? Well, I think in, in the next years, what we need to do is to increase the amount of uh, facilities in the world in which we have this managed check for research type of work so we can increase the overall uh, water budget or water resources if you want in many many places in the world that are facing this shortage particularly because of the uh, climate change issues that we will have uh, but there are many challenges still like like the fact of whether you know viruses, emerging compounds in, uh, in uh, antibiotic resistant genes. So there are many, many issues still to be researched, both in the qu quantity type of thing and in the quality. And I hope we will be able to, to run this in the future for many, many years until retirement at least. Mm -hmm. Sounds absolutely wonderful. Thank you for being with us. This is Professor Xavier Sanchez Vela from Spain at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. Uh, thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet.